Detroit meteorologist Jessica Starr took her own life on Wednesday night. While the reason for her suicide is not exactly clear, her last social media posts were about complications that she was having as a result of LASIK eye surgery. There is a link between LASIK complications and suicide, although these complications happen in a very small percentage of surgeries. Joining us to talk this morning about avoidance, prevention, and management is Dr. Arun Gulani. He is an ophthalmologist with Gulani Vision here in Jacksonville. You know, I know when I called you yesterday to discuss this, um, one of the first things that you wanted to point out is this, this is something that is very rare. It very rarely happens. Correct. So LASIK uh, per se, Nikki, is one of the most successful eye surgeries in the world. It's life-changing. There is though a low, but yes, there is an incidence of side effects and complications that are possible. Correct. Yeah, it, it's very scary, you know, when you hear this. I, I looked at some of her social media postings. She had the surgery about five weeks ago. She tried to come back to work a couple of weeks later. She only made it to work for one day and then turned around and went back. We don't know for sure if this is the exact reason that she took her own life. Um, you know, a lot of her colleagues are speculating there was, there was more to it. But like I said, you know, it really does bring this to light. So what are some of the things that we can do to avoid any of these complications with LASIK eye surgery? So prevention always is the most important thing that I talk and teach about. The most elegant uh, information we can convey here on this podium is there are over a dozen LASIK techniques. Many patients are not aware of this. Many doctors are not able to perform the whole spectrum, I believe having seen complications who come to us from all over the world, that is the main thing that I want to educate people about. Mm -hmm. LASIK is not just one surgery. There are actually over 12 different LASIK laser vision techniques. LASIK, EpiLASIK, PRK, ASA, SBK, uh, SMILE, RELAX, etc. Let the surgeon decide what's the right surgery for you. Now from the surgeon's side, make sure that they don't do only one LASIK they should be able to provide the spectrum and hence design the surgery to you. Each eye is different. So the highest level of uh, satisfaction and success is because the surgery was uniquely designed to you with the technology and technique. What would your advice be about how you know you're getting someone that is able to do these different surgeries and that's had you know, a success rate and hasn't had any issues before? Absolutely. Nowadays, everything is so transparent with Google. The world is so small. So first and foremost is like I say, you know, go into the consultation with your eyes wide open, if I may, is look through the ads, look through the deals. Blindness at any bargain is not a great deal at all. So sit down, talk to your doctor, look eye to eye. The technique that you have selected for me, doctor, is that the best one for me? Why? Mm -hmm. What is the long-term implication of this if you're, let's say, in the future going to have cataract or presbyopia, reading glasses? And if something goes wrong, doctor, can you fix it? Well, and, and that's the next thing. If something does go wrong, if you have a complication from this, what, what can you do? I mean, can that be fixed? Yes. So the good news is most of the LASIK complications can be corrected back to 2020. That is possible. So I don't want people to lose hope. But again, prevention is so important. Look through the advertising, go uh, investigate, interview your surgeon. Take your time. Don't do this at lunchtime. Don't do this on the weekend. It's a very important life-changing decision. I repeat, LASIK is one of the most successful eye surgical procedures in the world. And it's very positive. Though the incidence of side effects is very, very low, it is unfortunate if someone has that. But yet the good news is it can be corrected. Yeah, and I think it's important to note that Dr. Gulani is actually headed uh, over to Paris and then to Hong Kong to teach other ophthalmologists from around the world how to safely perform these surgeries. And how many surgeries would you say you've performed? Thousands at this point. So. Thousands at this point, close to 20,000? Yeah, and have you too, ever yeah. had a serious issue like we're discussing? No, I'm blessed we've not had a serious issue like this at all, but because we are the referral center for LASIK complication corrections, I have seen the profile, and it's always very, very intelligent, highly educated patients, and nothing wrong with them. It's just that there was some mis, uh, what do you call, uh, misalignment between how diligent the surgeon was in evaluating the patient, not just coming in quickly and doing surgery. Look at the anatomy, look at the physiology, plan the optics, sit down with the patient, then perform the surgery. And from the patient's point of view, it's take your time, determine who your surgeon is, and you know, today you don't have to go to your surgeon just because he's in your backyard. You can fly anywhere for the and, best in the world. And do it. Thank you so much, Dr. Galani. We, sure. we greatly appreciate it.